Now this is the police headquarters. Ah, uh, of course. Whenever we had protests, we would protest up on this road. We protest at, uh, to pull the protest at that police station. And in 1960, on the, on the 30th of March, we had 40,000 men coming up this road. They came down, they came down the Swalls Drive, and they came down this road to protest again. The pass, the dump pass. Now the dump pass was the the dump pass was the food that we carried. Mm -hmm. You said forty thousand just men, no women. Just forty thousand men. Because you must know, women were not allowed in the cities. The cities were the townships that they call today townships. Uh -huh. Those were the dormitories for the working class men. They never traveled with their husbands because apartheid not only split up the different race groups and the tribes, it split the families, it went to the core. So our mothers that were in the cities, they would live as domestics in the background, uh, in the backyard of the employers. Okay, here, here. Our family were boarding and heading on a township tour and lunch. Anybody else back there? No. Nah. Alright fam, this is where we're coming from. South Africa, a lot of history, culture and struggle. For modern day nation building. We, we, let, let him pace himself. Let him, let him pace himself for a second. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of traffic. Come on, family. Board up, board up. All aboard, all aboard. Family, we're heading to the township. Um, so traffic can be a little tight now. All right. Just to get into the town, just get up to the bus. Otherwise, we will never get into the uh, This is food. Mm. 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 Any questions or comments? So after they're walking down the street, and that was to get rid of this pass. The don't pass, yeah, that was on the 30th. You must know nine days earlier, we had a big march in, in the in the Johannesburg area, and that became known as what is called the Sharpeville Massacre. That was on the 21st of March, 1960. And that march was led by Robert Mangaliso Sobukwe, the gentleman that you saw who was kept in isolation on Robin Island. Yes. Yeah. And uh, he was deemed more, he was a Pan-Africanist. He was a Mac, he was a Gavaite. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He, he embraced, the, he embraced the policies and the philosophy of Kwame Nkrumah, you know. Um, and of course, he was then not appreciated. He was then eventually poisoned yeah. on Robben Island. And when he was almost losing his life, they, le they released him. That is, that is, um, what was your question again? That, is, that, that, that was the match, that was, that was the Dompas, yeah, that was the match led by Robert Sububwe. That was 21st of March, nine days later, a match led by a young man called Philip Skosana. Even the road now is named after him. Uh, and, and of course, that 40,000 men, they availed themselves to be arrested, but because there were so many, they were sent back to the township. And the township, the way the townships are set up, it has one entrance, one exit, so that they could seal it off. And they started to arrest most of those that were the leaders of the march. Philip Skosana managed to escape. This is the road that I was born on. I pride myself that I was born under, under the most wonderful, uh, under the foot of the seventh wonder of the world here, Table Mountain.
this was the female prison on my right hand side. It was the prison for female, female. female prisons and mostly activists as they especially right. running, having to run, uh, having to have their trial down here and it was mostly black whites. Whites were not kept in the same prisons. As was as Winnie ever kept there? Say it again. Was Winnie Madonna ever kept there? No, she, she was not kept here because most of her activities was in the north. Because oh. I, in, the, in the mining towns of Johannesburg and okay. its surroundings. Living basically in Soweto. Okay. On my left hand side is the District 6 area. It is said when the people of District 6, when they were removed, as we bearing in mind that over a period of 16 years from 1966 to 1982, 60,000 people were forcefully removed only from the District 6 area. And what happened in at District 6 happened in 42 sites around Cape Town. So we speak about more than a million people that was forcibly removed from Cape Town and its surrounding right. pushed onto the Cape Flats. And of course, it was said when that happened, the heart of the city was taken out. Ironically, it happened during the first heart transplant. So in one part of the city, you pulled the heart out. In another part of the city, grappling, putting the heart in. Uh, any questions? No. Now, as I said, as we are going towards the townships, you will then notice the townships were set up as dormitories for the migrant laborers. Now, blacks were pushed into what is called the reservations. We had nine of those reservations, all, all set away from the cities. The reservations then became the labor camps. It is from there, from the reservations, that you got your certain amount of people that you needed in the mines, in the big cities. So, and we had a law to prevent the others, and it was known as the Influx Control Law or the Influx Control Act. And, and as a result, that would eventually impoverish most of the blacks on the other side because the reservations know that development taking place and they didn't want it to develop it because it meant those people would never come for work and the Cape Town area we had of course we speak about the red wine Cape Town is one of them is the only area in South Africa where we have the highest fetal alcohol syndrome <laughs> yeah. Wow, she's so saying there's a lot of alcohol or Alex. If there is, and that is... During it, pregnancy. No, fetal alcohol syndrome. And babies, babies. Because wow. mothers pregnant. Mothers are Right, the that's mother, the pregnancy. Yeah, they are taking drug in pregnancy because it is a cult, and there was this culture of drinking was introduced to to get your workforce. We, it is called as the tot system. We, people will be given alcohol in the morning, in the, ev in the afternoon, and in the evening, so that they will be perpetually drunk, which means you will never miss out on coming to work. It resulted in so many of the people, if you should do the wine areas of Cape Town, you will see that many of the locals are stunted because of that FAS. Um, as we are moving towards the townships, you will notice that the townships are away from the city. That economically already cripples us as most of our job opportunities are in the city. It takes about, it takes about, at the moment in our country, Minimal wage for unskilled labor is 70 rand a day. Traveling from Kaya to Cape Town and back is 70 rand a day. Which means it perpetuates poverty. Yeah, we've spoken about, we've spoken about the Europeans um, 
in 1906 the Europeans coming, uh, the British arriving after the uh, Dutch have been around for 150 years. Another 150 years the British would be around and during that 150 years it was different to that of the Dutch. As, as, as I said, the Dutch were not into colonizing. They only was here to safeguard that strategic point. Where was the British, they had the policies of, I mean, they, they were just busy, they were very much involved with the slave trade, which already showed you the dehumanization, and then they're coming in here, where at first they were, were more interested in land. So they're going to start usurping land, and it's going to be scorch policies, killing cattle, and eventually, with the discovery of gold and diamonds, they needed now a labor force. And the easiest way to get that labor force was to take away the cattle, the, resources. The, the cattle, and of course the land. So that today, up to today, the biggest issue in our country is the land issue. It has become so sensitive. Um, and of course, it is the land issue that is giving rise to what is called the ghetto life that we as blacks are experiencing because we are now landless and most of the land today belong to Europe. As 87% as of the land belongs to 13% of the population. And you ask, now where is the equality? And as long as you, as I said, as long as you're landless, you have no identity. And that is why you find the youth at the moment, their rallying cry is like what is called the, the same rallying cry that they had in Germany. Lebensraum, living space, we, that is, living space meaning we need land. And those that are in charge of the land are not really comfortable with a cry. And you will then see the emergence of a very radical political movement, as you must bear in mind, 65% of our population happens to be you. And at the moment, and they are youth, many of them were born after apartheid, meaning they were born free, but they grew up under apartheid conditions because conditions hasn't changed. Political freedom has come. We've all had that euphoria. But it dawned upon us that social and economic freedom is more important than just being recognized as human. Because the freedom that they spoke about was just to give me recognition. And as I said, 25 years ago or 26 years ago, I was the majority of us living in this country were subhuman and they've internalized it to that level that we have huge challenges in the township. For this high level of unemployment, see, 70% of our people unemployed, a legacy of our past, and of course it has been perpetuated by a new government. As we have come to know that it's a folly to be wise. And you maintain high levels of ignorance amongst the masses and you will be able to control them. So that at the moment in our country, education happens to be a privilege and not a right yet.
to be schooled in my country, it is free. To be educated in my country, will have to have money. As under apartheid, I was, de I was denied access to education because of my pigmentation. After 1994, those schools that have denied me access because of my color, are still denying me access because most of those schools have become private ties, which means you have to pay to get in. And with the high levels of unemployment, there is no real means of affordability. So we will prepare, we keep on perpetuating that very same cycle that we were fighting against over the last 300 years. Any questions or comments? Um, yeah, I have a question. So you said that the, um, that was a great statement you said about to be, uh, what you say? you said to be knowledge, uh, all, you have access to the schools, but you're not getting educated. How did you say it again? Say how you well, said it. I, I, I said to you, education. Yes. Happens to be a privilege. Yes. It is not a right yet. Yes. And as long as education is not a right, and a uh, uh, as long as education is a privilege and not a right, we will be not, we will be denied access. Which means we will always remain illiterate. Any other questions? <laughs>